Right, as I said earlier, um, most of these lectures will be catered towards you trying to apply them to your project. But obviously, because you haven't got your projects yet, this is the, the only chance we'll have to indulge in some, uh, some theory about innovation. Hopefully, you'll still be able to apply it and use it, uh, but it's not quite as applicable as some of the, uh, the future lectures to come. But this is essentially an introduction into innovation what would you class it as? How would you characterize it? So let's start from the basics. Uh, what is innovation? So I'm not going to carry on now until someone will offer me a definition. taking an, in, uh, an invention and rolling it out as a business and making it a success. Does anybody have any, any offer, any alternative suggestions, anything wrong with that particular one? Go ahead. I'm, I'm guessing it doesn't have to be a success. Okay. It can be innovation, you know, it's not a success. Uh, a success. Can we think of a innovation that hasn't been a success? Absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're suggesting that the the invention uh, is the creation of the product, but uh, to make it from an invention to an innovation, you have to have market success. You think? No. Uh, okay. Right. So you can have a, a failed innovation in the marketplace. What about issues of uh, impact? Should, should an innovation have some kind of imp uh, noticeable impact? Okay, that's a good point. And would you, would you class something that is potentially negative for the uh, environment as an innovation? Could it still be an innovation, though? You think so? I think that makes sense. I'd say most people would class the atom bomb as, a, uh, as an innovation. Certainly got its uses. It certainly had an in, uh, inventive step. Um, and why, why, why might we be wanting to do this right now? Well, at some point, you're going to have to describe your business idea and your product in terms of its novelty and in terms of the words that the people in business use, the level of innovation, these types of things. So you've got to know what characteristics are behind it. And maybe it's important to exaggerate certain characteristics rather than others or or focus or develop on certain characteristics as opposed to others. So why might we want innovation? Well, we've touched on a few of these already. It may be the prime purpose is to make money from that particular product or service. It may be to establish growth within a community or a, a single company. It may be because there's a demand there. Um, I, I heard somewhere that uh, Steve Jobs launched the, the original uh, iPod. And in the same day, somebody said, when are you going to make this smaller? And there's al always a demand for improved products, reduced weight, reduced size. There's always a demand from the market to improve. 
competition. It might be that your uh, competition is too close to you, you haven't got enough market share, so therefore you have to lever extra market share by being innovative and stealing more. Or it may be because we just need to be uh, innovative to increase the survival chances of our planet uh, for sustainability purposes. But generally speaking, I think agreeing with the gentleman there, uh, it's about creating some kind of business, generating business. Whether any of those is the, uh, the primary driver, um, it could be any of them. So some definitions from uh, literature. Um, an innovation is an idea, practice or object that is perceived as new by an individual or other unit of, adopted, of, of adoption. So this author is emphasizing the newness. It has to be something different from what is currently existing. Uh, the next author from the DTI proposes innovation is a successful exploitation of ideas. So it's not just that it's new. In fact, they don't even suggest it has to be new. It just has to be an exploitation of something. So as long as you can sell it, as long as you can use it for one of those uh, five uh, reasons, uh, it's classed as an innovation. Innovation are new things in, business, uh, in the business of producing, distributing, and consuming new products or services. So this particular one is about emphasizing the multiplicity of innovation. It can be in many different forms. And the fourth one is the one I think we're going to go with most of all here, which is uh, the first commercial application or production of a new process or product. So the first emphasizes it's got to be new in some way or another, and it's got to be um, commercially exploited. Uh, here's another common view, though. Uh, this was uh, produced by Tim McAloon when we were out having a beer one night, which was... Uh, an innovation is one of those things that make you wonder how it was done before that uh, thing was on the market. So in other words, it's transformative in some way or it's disruptive. So maybe it changes the technology completely. Maybe it changes the market uh, completely. Maybe it changes society completely. So some people view it as that step change difference. It's also defined in, the, in terms of these three domains here. Um, in, o, in other words, to say uh, innovation to be successful, it's got to be possible with the technology. Uh, so it's got to be uh, technologically feasible. The market has got to be viable, as in there's got to be adequate margins there, and it's got to be desirable to the users or accepted by the users. If you don't have those three, you can't have a successful innovation. Now, I'm guessing some of you may have downloaded the slides, so the answers will be there for you, but does anyone know the inventor of the bicycle? It's a general knowledge quiz. Go ahead. Oh, you don't. <laughs> no ideas? Does anybody know the inventors of any of these products? Okay, that's possibly slightly worrying. Um, but perhaps one of you can tell me, suggest which one of these may be considered to be the odd one out. So just so you know, this list was compiled basically on the 150th anniversary of the uh, United Kingdom Patent Office. And they asked the public to rate their top 10 inventions of all time. And this is the, the list they came up with. Uh, surprising to see cat's eyes on the list, but, uh, uh, but there's one particular one there which is uh, a standout. Go ahead. Pardon? And why is that? Okay. That's one reason for it to be... Uh, it wasn't the answer I was looking for, but... I would also say the Flintstones, but I'm guessing that's the one that saved the most lives. Okay. 
Yeah, okay, fair point. <laughs> Guy over there. It was commented by coincidence. Yeah. So I looking for something else. Is that right? I didn't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I think the answer must be penicillin then, and I'm, I'm wrong. Uh, but I actually had a different interpretation of what the odd one out here is. Um, and I would say it's the World Wide Web uh, because it was the only one that wasn't patented. So it didn't make uh, Tim Berners-Lee any money. He decided... When he invented this, he thought, this could be the greatest gift to humanity I could ever produce. And I can either patent it and lock it behind doors, or I can release it to the world as a gift to humanity. And that's exactly what he did. Uh, what a great guy. Um, but he basically didn't really make any money off it. I mean, I'm sure he makes a lot of consultancy work and all the rest, but uh, uh, he didn't really exploit his invention. Uh, so I'd say all the others are probably considered to be innovations in the classic sense, um, except Tim Berners-Lee's, which is probably left at an invention level. Uh, anyone want to offer a, a great invention that's missing off this list, by the way? Electricity, OK. Maybe the transistor. Soap. Soap. That's a good one. Would you say that's an innovation? Do you think they exploited it for a... Uh... No, not a specific person. No. Okay. But yeah, very important, incredibly important invention. Okay, so you can, you can see there that some things which are... or some inventions which are on a parallel footing in terms of their impact to society and humanity may be differing in the way that the inventors can exploit them and make use from them. Some of those they'll have made a lot more money from than others. Uh, two examples here of uh, invention versus innovation. Um, this one here is uh, by Spengler. Is a, uh, let me see, it was a carpet, um, I think it was a, a carpet brushing and cleansing uh, device. And Hoover produced uh, the Beat Sweeps and Cleans uh, vacuum cleaner. So, I mean, hands up who thinks uh, the Hoover was the invention. So, hands up who thinks it was the innovation. Okay, so it's, the, it's basically the exploitation of the technology. And the fact that you can have parallel technologies, but unless it's concretized into a product, with consideration of the market, it won't be a successful innovation. Another example here, Howe versus Singer. Quite parallel technologies in terms of sewing machines, but because Singer was packaged up, accepted by the market, it was a successful invention or in, uh, innovation, sorry, um, and Howe's was left as just the invention form. So we're essentially saying by this, innovation is just a subset of what the inventions are. You may have lots of inventions, lots of patents produced, but only a few of them can be packaged up as useful products for society and that you can leave a financial gain from. Uh, this is another diagram saying a similar thing, except it adds the diffusion element to it as well suggesting that uh, innovations not are just about commercialising a product, but also making sure it diffuses into society, it becomes the social norm. So, anyone think that is an innovation? Go ahead. So do you think it is? Uh, I think that it is an innovation uh, when it was uh, 
because it was just radically cheaper, you think? Yeah. Anyone else offer a, a slightly different suggestion? Or have a different viewpoint? Wasn't it the first pen to use a little ball? Um, I don't think so, actually. Okay. Uh, because then it would have been a, a great invention. Exactly. Instead of uh, having to dip your pen into the ink every time you, you wanted to write. That's right. Um, but no, it, it wasn't for that reason. Um, but that would have that would have made it an innovation. I, I would agree. Um, but I th I think really what it's down to is the fact it's it was the first single use. So the purpose of this is not to refill or to do anything with. All previous pens are were built for the purpose of refilling, replacing the cartridges, and so on. This was done targeted a market where it was cheap enough so they could dispose of it. It was kind of starting of the disposable era. So I would say, in terms of a, a new market niche, that was an innovation. Cigarette? An innovation or not? Any suggestions? Absolutely. So there was the, the fact it was a first pre-rolled cigarette, perhaps, when it first came about. <coughs> and what's the, real, what's the real invention there? Is it the product? Um, and in this case, I would say it's the manufacturing process. That's the real invention. Obviously, it has its own niche as well in the market, people who want pre-rolled cigarettes. Uh, but what really was the, the big invention behind this was the production facility to tightly wrap um, and efficiently wrap cigarettes. Very good point. Uh, the zip fastener. So it's just, in this case, then a performance increase. It's not really doing a, a catering for a new market. It's just slightly better than the previous one. But I think this is a nice example where you may say uh, you can have an innovation where it's catering for the same purpose, the same market, but just substantially better than the previous one. That's what makes it um, innovation. So the market's the same, it's just the technology has improved. Uh, if you can't see it, this is a, a hat which claps like that. So you can hold two beers at the same time. What do we think? I mean, I bet they make money from it. I'm sure there wasn't a market for that before. <laughs> it's probably a new technology in the sense that has never been put together before, before it had been. So is, should that be classed as an innovation? 
think if you produce that at the end of your report, you'll uh, get a good grade. So, so maybe the things you were suggesting earlier about having the societal impact or some kind of major positive impact uh, to society is an important thing towards it. Um, and of course, Lego. Is Lego an innovation? Anyone going to offer me a reason? Go ahead. I'm guessing it was the first time that they built it when they first came out, where toys were normally made in wood and quite costly, and they could mass produce them in plastic, and you could stack them and put them together. OK. Uh, Lego also redefined some of the ideas on how children <coughs> play and their creativity process, and in which I think that uh, it's really Okay. That you can actually build up your own things in coins of brain set up by it. Yeah. I see a few people have been to uh, some Lego keynote speeches. <laughs> <laughs> and also, it's, it's quite an interesting one. Of course, it does have the, the learning benefits. It is a learning tool. I think maybe that is, part of that is post-justified. Uh, kids would buy it anyway, and uh, then you can, you can basically build this education market around it. Um, but what's great about Lego, I, I guess, is the fact that it's, it's just versatile. It doesn't have a, a particular niche or use. It just can be used for many different things. Um, and then the iPhone 4, the final one. I mean, I would say this probably has had a bigger impact than the other, in, um, other designs before it. Is it an innovation? the iPhone concept, would you say, was uh, innovative? OK, we had phones with software on it before, though. So OK. Like what, sorry? Siri. Siri. Yeah. Don't know what that is, sorry. <laughs> well, I, I, well think, I think that's a good point. Siri is uh, a voice recognition system, I think. I, I don't have an iPhone. Yeah, yeah. On, the new, on the new version of the iPhone, and it essentially changes the way you interact with your phone so that you, it, a lot of the stuff is actually happening sort of in the cloud alongside it. So that, I think that's a, that's a valid argument for some, yeah. some, well, a, a real innovation in, in, in the current iPhone because it takes that into the phone. Let's see if the market adopts it. That's, that's the other side of it. Yeah. Uh, when we need to, uh, to uh, see if it's a successful innovation. But that's something that definitely changed a lot between the last two generations. Yeah. So they created their own uh, platform for programs, uh, the App Store, and which has been another way that people are actually using their phones. And you can see our HTC also uses the same, and Google and have all those uh, platforms in which they uh, collect ideas and pro programs and uh, are able to use their phones in a various ways. I think that really changed um, our way of using phones, and that's why you can also define it as an innovation. Yeah, I'd agree. I think the, the app feature on the Apple phones was, was the big hitter. That's what made it the real difference, the fact you could customize your apps, develop apps, and allow the community to do the development work for you. Um, but also, it just basically did everything a little bit better. Um, and I, I, that probably made it an innovation in itself, I would say. But those are some examples there where there's very different reasons for you wanting to consider it an innovation, which means you, you're going to have an incredibly hard task uh, if you want to be an entrepreneur to argue whether your project is more innovative than somebody else's or yours deserves funding more than somebody else's does. It's a really, really hard sell because there's no hard and fast criteria for it. 
but you've got to know the dimensions behind what's considered an innovation. One thing that is really important from my perspective is that your product creates some value to society or to the users that are using it. And that's why we, when we're looking at the club hat, yeah. we didn't consider that as an innovation because it's just some silly thing that you use once for a party. Um, so that I think creating value is really important, making a difference with your product. Yeah, I agree. But it, let's say I'm, I couldn't agree more. Um, that's my personal perspective as well. But it could be an instance where you create something that is, you know, even damaging for society, but it has uh, a market niche. Um, let's say cigarettes, for example. It has a market niche. It's not particularly good for your health. It might make somebody a lot of money. So on many of the, the, the kind of capitalist drivers, it, it really is a success. But I kind of guess it's partly up to your, your own ethics and the ethics of your funders as to whether they, they want to enforce this societal improvement element. could go disastrously wrong. No. Can you see that at all? Ah, OK. Um, basically, one of the main ways to distinguish between innovation types is to put it on two axes. So you have the newness to the company, as in changes of process, changes of technology, and a newness to the market. Um, and obviously something that's both new to the company in terms of technology and new to the market is considered more radical uh, than something that is incrementally new to both. Uh, I've left a, um, a paper on the, page, um, on the lecture page today uh, by Garcia and Calaton. Um, and they basically do a literature review of, I reckon, probably about 100 different authors in the area of innovation and product development, looking at what they consider to be an innovation or uh, an invention. Um, and they basically distilled it down into quite a simple um, logic gate sequence. So you can uh, interpret the design of what you think it's, it is in terms of uh, macro uh, improvements at the marketing level or micro improvements at the um, market level, and then if it's macro or micro at the technology level. And you just feed it into this logic gate and uh, it will give you uh, which type of innovation it is. Um, so that's one way you can, you can go and classify whether you think some of your designs or some of your business ideas are more or less innovative than others. Uh, here's one, hopefully that's a little bit more easy to see. Um, again, it's the novelty of technology on the y-axis and the novelty of the market um, on the x-axis. And it's going from established uh, to emerging for market and from established to breakthrough for the technology. So on the established for both, we've got application innovators. So a generalized technology already, uh, a market that's already established and you're just making increments increments in the technology for a new application then we have market innovators where you've changed the market completely you've even produced a new market from your your technology technical innovators where you've produced a breakthrough uh, bit of equipment but it may be the same um, market such as the zip we had earlier and then there's the paradigm innovators so just out of interest who can anyone name a paradigm innovator? Something that has completely changed a market and a technology in one go. Go ahead. The World Wide Web. The what, sorry? The World Wide Web. The World Wide Web. Yeah, yep. the internet. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe. Anyone disagree with that? I disagree as yes, there was other social networks there, so they had already a market that was in Britain. But maybe it was uh, a breakthrough in, uh, in a sense of uh, clarity. Yeah. 
Okay, so I think there was things like MySpace around before it, perhaps. So maybe some of the technology was um, already there, but they just did it a little bit better. Any others? Well, I like some big things like washing machine, Google, television, like the computer, the what is it called? microprocessor, microprocessor, yeah. things like that. Absolutely, yeah. I, I'm, it, it's debatable whether perhaps a washing machine uh, is, because I, I guess some of the technology within it is known, and it's, it's debatable whether a, a kind of assembling or putting together very known technology in a certain way is a uh, paradigm shift in the technology dimension. Um, I don't think when they invented the washing machine, any of those components or any of the parts were were unknown technologically speaking, it was just a very novel assembly of components. Um, you mean the microwave food uh, processing unit? Um, yeah, quite possibly. I mean, I, I think that's a stronger argument. Um, but again, most of those parts will have been, I'm sure, the people who invented the microwave didn't invent uh, microwave emitters. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe it's part, partly to do with the first commercial exploitation of, a, uh, of an invention. Okay, then they're quite few and far between. I'll come up with some examples of each now. Um, so, just oh, I think we've covered this. Uh, you know where they sit on the uh, the list. Uh, so, an application innovator would be somebody who just pr produces a uh, a new app for an iPhone, for example. Uh, quite simple to reuse the terms, or perhaps a slightly uh, higher resolution camera. Uh, market innovators. Um, I wanted to use Sims as an example here because it was pretty much considered to be a, um, um, an application innovator, software uh, or games usually are, in the sense that they're just uh, catering for the same market uh, but doing something slightly different. Uh, whereas Sims had a very different demographic. Uh, you can't really see the text there, uh, but they had a substantially higher proportion of female users uh, than any other uh, games on the market. So it was clear that Sims was catering for quite a different market segment than some of the previous games uh, providers. Uh, here's quite a nice uh, example um, of a technology uh, invention or innovation from my previous university. This is one of the guys I was working with um, in producing shoe soles. So typically, you may get the demographics of people's feet, you work out average shapes, uh, you use some CAD CAM, uh, you produce a machine mold, you then injection mold, and you mass produce uh, shoe soles. Um, but what they were doing at the University of Bath was uh, scanning people's feet, uh, clerks were scanning people's feet, producing point clouds of it, freezing rubber, cryogenically freezing rubber, and then machining out the rubber to suit the exact profiles of people's feet. Um, so it was a process of sort of mass customization. Um, and they're getting some success with it at the moment. But here's my two examples of perhaps paradigm innovators, uh, GPS uh, systems and Wi-Fi. Um, you may disagree, um, but those are two of the best I could come up with. Okay, there's essentially three routes uh, to invention. There's the ones that you'll be going for, the lone hero uh, heroic version or just small groups. You can do it through a corporate, which is usually closed behind intellectual property. Um, or you can go the open version, where you release it to society and, and let people contribute to your projects. It's a risky business. 
I think this is uh, Moen's Andreas in drawing. Sometimes it works. It's the Prius. Maybe some of you disagree. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, that's the Sinclair C5. I'm, I'm quite a fan of that, incidentally. Does anyone know how to turn this light down, by any chance? No? Um, but maybe some of the big failures, so the C5 was considered a, a major failure. Um, in fact, it's one of the classic engineering design failures, uh, not really considering the market. Um, but when you think about it, it wasn't that far off being a success. Think about some of the other products on the market. Uh, this uh, BMW uh, roofed motorbike, the convertible smart car, really small compact unit, very, uh, very successful. And the Segway now is actually, actually doing quite well, but for very different reasons from what it was originally intended. So the Segway was marketed for old people, basically. It said, it's impossible to fall off a Segway. Um, unfortunately, the, the inventor of the Segway then drove off a cliff on one and killed himself. <laughs> Um, so they had to go through some substantial remarketing and now it's seen as a, a more young person's thing to have a go at through city centres and uh, maybe off-road off uh, vehicles. Um, so you can see maybe they had something right about the technology. Maybe there was a niche there, but maybe it was just positioned slightly wrong. Segway certainly got it wrong, I think, targeting that device for old people. Even if it is difficult to fall off it, I cannot imagine my nan on one of them. Uh, why, did, why did they fail? Well, we just covered that. Uh, no one's perfect, so of course you can make mistakes. And in fact, lots of people are, are looked highly upon for daring, trying things out, making mistakes. In terms of entrepreneurship, it's very good to go through iterations, learn quickly. Um, lots of car companies, for example, have the philosophy of uh, fail often and early, meaning hurry up, produce some prototypes, let's find out whether this works quickly rather than wasting our time and all our development costs. So Edison here, uh, a very nice quote, uh, I have not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that it did not work. Um, what you can't see in that drawing there is a uh, concrete piano. Um, I'm just wondering, does anyone know the significance of the concrete piano? Well, one of Edison's greatest inventions was the, the all-in-one concrete house. Uh, so he thought in the future, houses were gonna be made completely of concrete, including all the furniture and fittings inside. And uh, that was one of his major flops, the idea of a, a concrete piano sat inside a concrete house. Uh, so even even great man like Edison can get it very wrong. I don't know whether he was joking when he, uh, he proposed that. But. Uh, there's the accidentals. So you've got to acknowledge maybe being your success is due to unforeseen factors. So Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, for example, Lots of people have said they wouldn't be successful if they had not been at that place, at that time, at that age. So just imagine if any of those had been born in a different era or a different country or a different city, they would have not made it. They would not be the success they are. So there's a serendipity element to it. You've just got to be ready for when the opportunity arises. It can come by complete mistake. Uh, this is the case story of Viagra, um, where the drug company was looking for uh, drugs to relax blood vessels. Um, and when some of the uh, trials reported that volunteers were coming back reporting unusual side effects, uh, from which they made a, a hell of a lot of money from. Uh, so just to summarize quickly, Uh, sorry, the, the English there is terrible. Uh, the trick, uh, innovation is tricky to define, uh, but it's generally seen as the exploitation of a new idea or an invention. Uh, there's many ways to categorize innovation types, 
Uh, but the simplest and perhaps most useful would be on the two axes of technology and markets. Um, I don't think we really need to go into this exercise because we had enough discussion on it. So what we'll do, we'll take questions quickly and then 15 minutes break and then the last section. Any questions? So this is just some background theory for this course, but you may want to try use it and think about it. When you're proposing your business ideas on Friday, think about the level of innovation. Think about how you might break it down in terms of is it new to, is it a new technology? Is it new to the market? And how radical is it? Uh, we'll take 15 minutes break and back at quarter past, please. <laughs>